brought to you by wikivd.com. Alfred Hitchcock Sir Alfred Joseph Hitchcock was an English and American film director and producer, at times referred to as the master of suspense. He pioneered many elements of the suspense and psychological thriller genres. He had a successful career in British cinema, with both silent films and early talkies and became renowned as England's best director. Hitchcock moved to Hollywood in 1939, and became a U.S. citizen in 1955. Hitchcock became a highly visible public figure through interviews, movie trailers, cameo appearances in his own films, and the ten years in which he hosted the television program Alfred Hitchcock Presents. He also fashioned for himself a recognizable directorial style. Hitchcock's stylistic trademarks include the use of camera movement that mimics a person's gaze, forcing viewers to engage in a form of voyeurism. In addition, he framed shots to maximize anxiety, fear, or empathy, and used innovative forms of film editing. His work often features fugitives on the run alongside icy blonde female characters. In 1978, film critic John Russell Taylor described Hitchcock as the most universally recognizable person in the world and a straightforward middle-class Englishman who just happened to be an artistic genius. Prior to 1980, there had long been talk of Hitchcock being knighted for his contribution to film. Critic Roger Ebert wrote, other British directors like Sir Carol Reed, and Sir Charlie Chaplin were knighted years ago, while Hitchcock, universally considered by film students to be one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, was passed over. Hitchcock later received his knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II in the 1980 New Year Honours. Hitchcock directed more than 50 feature films in a career spanning six decades, and is often regarded as one of the most influential directors in cinematic history. Following a 2007 critics poll by Britain's Daily Telegraph in which he was ranked Britain's greatest filmmaker, one scholar wrote, Hitchcock did more than any director to shape modern cinema, which would be utterly different without him. His flair was for narrative, cruelly withholding crucial information, and engaging the emotions of the audience like no one else. Hitchcock's first thriller, The Lodger, a story of the London fog, helped shape the thriller genre in film. His 1929 film, Blackmail, is often cited as the first British sound feature film, while Rio Indo, Vertigo, North by Northwest, and Psycho are regularly ranked among the greatest films of all time. Early Life Hitchcock was born on 13 August 1899 in Leytonstone, at the time part of Essex. He was the second son and the youngest of three children of William Hitchcock, a greengrocer, and poulterer, and Emma Jane Hitchcock. He was named after his father's brother. Hitchcock was raised as a Roman Catholic, and sent to Salesian College, Battersea, and the Jesuit Grammar School St. Ignatius's College in Stamford Hill, London. His parents were both of half-English and half-Irish ancestry. He often described a lonely and sheltered childhood that was worsened by his obesity. Around age five, Hitchcock recalled that, to punish him for behaving badly, his father sent him to the local police station, with a note asking the officer to lock him away for five minutes. This incident implanted a lifelong fear of policemen in Hitchcock, and such harsh treatment and wrongful accusations are frequent themes in his films. Sources vary on Hitchcock's performance in school. Gina Dare reports that by most accounts, Alfred was only an average, or slightly above average, student. However, McGilligan writes that Hitchcock certainly excelled academically. When Hitchcock was 15, his father died. In that same year, he left Street. Ignatius to study at the London County Council School of Engineering and Navigation in Poplar, London. After leaving, he became a draftsman and advertising designer with a electrical cable company called Henley's. During the First World War, Hitchcock was called up to serve in the British Army. He was ultimately excused from military service with a C3 classification due to his size, height, 
or an unnamed medical condition, but was nonetheless able to stand service conditions in garrisons at home. Hitchcock joined a cadet regiment of the Royal Engineers in 1917. His military stint was limited, and he mainly engaged in theoretical briefings, weekend drills, and exercises. Hitchcock would march around London's Hyde Park and was required to wear military putties, though he never mastered the proper wrapping of them. While working at Henley's, Hitchcock began to double in creative writing. The company's in-house publication The Henley Telegraph was founded in 1919 and he often submitted short articles, eventually becoming one of its most prolific contributors. His first piece, Gas, published in the first issue, tells of a young woman who imagines that she is being assaulted one night in London, only for the twist to reveal that it was all just a hallucination in the dentist's chair induced by the anaesthetic. Hitchcock's second piece was, The Woman's Part, which involves the conflicted emotions that a husband feels as he watches his actress wife perform. On stage, Sordid, surrounds an attempt to buy a sword from an antiques dealer. With another twist ending, the short story, And There Was No Rainbow, is Hitchcock's first brush. With possibly censurable material, a young man goes out looking for a brothel, only, to stumble into the house of his best friend's girl. What who, at first glance, seems to be a precursor to Abbott and Costello's Who's on First routine, as it is a short dialogue piece resembling antic dialogue from a music hall skit. It captures the confusion that occurs when a group of actors decide to put together a sketch in which they will impersonate themselves. In the story's 40 sentences, confusion regarding the questions Who's me? and Who's You? Rise to Comic Emotional Heights. The History of Pea Eating is a satirical disquisition on the various attempts that people have made over the centuries to eat peas successfully. His final piece, Fedora, is his shortest and most enigmatic contribution. It also gives a strikingly accurate description of his future wife Alma Reville, whom he had not yet met. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.